kids today in school, um, you know, they don't really get uh, uh, hands-on, you know, uh, use of math. And so the golf course is just an awesome place to bring them out and to be able to, you know, take what they've learned and, uh, you know, have practical application for it. But like I said, if you go on the website or you look at these three sheets, these, these three here are, are pretty simple. Um, I would show, start out showing an aerial photo of the golf course and say, okay, this is 140 acres. Well, they don't have any idea what an acre is. So we hop through the exercise of, you know, trying to relate it to a football field. So a football field with the end zones, okay, is 120 yards long and 53.33 yards wide, right? So it's 360 by 160. Right, multiply that out, 50, 57,600 square feet, 1.30 acres, right? So at least they can envision, you know, a football field. You know, I tell them, okay, 106 football fields will fit on our 140 acre golf course. It's like, okay, wow, that's cool, that's pretty big. So, but just, just to help them get an idea of, you know, size and just what you're talking about. But the sheets here, these are probably geared for, yeah, the sixth grade, length and width, and just simple, um, simple things they can figure out, yeah. Talk about, you know, every just every rectangle length times width, you know, we have to start out pretty simple with these kids, depending on how old they are, but, you know, that this, my son uh, was in fifth grade last year, and they were doing um, area calculations, which the golf course is just perfect for doing area stuff. So they'll, if they're in that age range, they'll get it. Anything above fifth grade, and they can handle that, no problem. So stuff that you need, you need a 100-foot tape. Um, it'd be real handy if you had uh, clipboards for the kids. I mean, if not, they can get away with, I mean, without it. But they're going to need pencils, a buddy up. You know, they'll, they'll both share a clipboard. Um, and, you know, you can either use irrigation flags to, to lay out a regular shape. You can use a bunker, okay, if you have one, like a practice area bunker that's big enough. Um, you can and just, you know, you can paint, you know, some of the marking paint we use, mark a shape out on the ground. The flags are easy, you know. And I usually start out and do uh, just like a simple rectangle here, length times width. So I get the kids to, you know, pull the tape out measure it, you know, they figure it out and they got to multiply it. And then, you know, we'll go and take a look at it and say, okay, if we cut this rectangle in half, what do we get? Whoa, almost hit it. Cut the rectangle in half, what do we get on an angle? We get a triangle, okay? And I say, you know, it should be, you know, if we, we, we cut it in half diagonally, it should be half of the area, but let's check it. So anybody remember the area for a triangle? Half the, half the base times the height. Times the height. Nice job. Okay, so we'll go and you know stretch the tape out and figure that out, and they'll go, wow, okay, yeah, this it actually works. So anyway, nice way for them to you know be able to put their hands on it. Um, you know, we think about um, how we use math every day at the golf course, right? Whether you guys really think about it or not, everything we do, fertilizer calculations, sprayer volume. Uh, calculations, top dressing, you know, how much, if I'm going to go out and uh, top dress 120,000 square feet of greens at an eighth of an inch, how much am I going to use, right? You need to figure all that stuff out. And uh, so anyway, math is really important in our, in our, you know, daily jobs, and you guys are experts at it. You don't think you are, but you are. And we we're talking about just simple fertilizer calculations, and I wrote on the board, I said, okay, if we were going to go out and we had a 16-16-16 a formulation, it was fertilizer, and we wanted to put it out at a quarter pound per thousand square feet, you know, and we got 120,000 square feet of greens, how much are we going to use? And I'm talking blank stairs, they had no idea what I was talking about, and you know, but once we walked through the, the exercise, and they got it, and they go, okay, yeah, this isn't so bad. Um, so, like I said, I usually lay out a rectangle. You can do a circle, right? You can do um, a trapezoid, parallelogram. You know, they're all real easy. Lay it out, make them stretch the tape out, um, figure it out, write the numbers down. You know, they, like I said, they buddy up. 
I try to keep them fairly quiet so they're all working out the numbers by themselves. I went and bought a bunch of cheap calculators. You know, I went to, to uh, I think, Office Depot, and they're about five bucks a piece. So I think about 10 of them so that, you know, when they share, we've got enough to go around. And most of the time I did do the numbers so that you don't really need a calculator. Everything's divisible by 10 so that, it, you know, it works out pretty easy. Okay. Um, so, do you guys know how to use the uh, offset method to figure out the size of an irregular shaped area? Anybody ever done that? A little bit? You have? I forgot how to do it. Forgot how to do it? Okay. It's pretty easy. Okay. And what I did was, is I took the uh, irrigation flags, laid out this um, irregular shape here. And so the first thing we need to do, in fact, I'm going to have you guys do it. I think you need two volunteers. How about Gary and Steve? And we need to stretch a tape from, we need to figure out the, yeah, the longest point, two points across, okay? So I put a, a green flag at, at one end and a green flag at the other. So they're going to measure that off and throw some numbers back at us here. Do you guys got the sheet that we can, let's see, what do we got here? Okay, you don't have it. Fine. We'll figure it out. So the first thing we need to do is get the length of that A to B. What do you got? 70 feet. 70 feet. Okay, so let's write that down. So we've got 70 feet for our total length. Well, what you need to do then is pick a number that's divisible by 70 because what we're going to do is pick that many points going across to help figure out the area of this. So 70, huh? 10, perfect. So we're going to use 10 feet. So every 10 feet along this, we're going to measure across and write those numbers down. Okay, so our crack shot team, so we're going this way, across here. So yeah, go out 10. Yeah, well let's lay that tape all the way out and we'll use another one going the other way. Where am I? Oh, my green flag's over here. So let's lay a flag every 10 feet and then you guys can mark across where those are, or what that number is, okay? So 10, 20, thirty. Okay, and just yell the number out and I'll write it down. Oh yeah, you can just keep going, thank you. You got a problem here? A bunch of stuff somewhere. There you go. Work? Yeah. Okay. Here we are, Jay. Looks like 34 and a half. 34. Next. Let's go right here to 20. So this method is about 4 to 5 percent within what it would actually be. The other thing you could do is divide this up into smaller pieces, right? 31? You could divide this up into two circles, you know, if you had a weird size that, yeah, exactly. Just cut it all up and then do all those and add it up. Close. Close. No, close. 21. Where did the measurement so far? We go 34, 31, 21, 16. Thirty-five. Thirty-seven. You got one more at the end. Twenty-six. Okay. So we have to add up those seven numbers. So 34, 21, 16, 35, 37, 26, and 31. Real quick. Yeah, you don't need one. 4, 5, 11, 
16, 22, 23, 30, three, the three, three, six, eight, nine, 12, 15, 17, 200 feet. Wow. Is that what you guys got? Yeah, 200. That's pretty easy. Okay, so we know that the distance from A to B is, was um, 70. Um, we determined the distance between the offset lines was 10 feet. Okay, we added up the lengths of those lines, which comes out to 200, right? And then all we do is we take, to find the area, we take 200 times 10, because that's the distance between the lines, and we come out to 2,000 square feet. And like I said, it's about 4 to 5% from being spot on. So it works pretty good. So if you've got a bunker, right? Bunkers are great because the kids love to run around the sand and, you know, get out there and do it. <laughs> exactly. Now, if the kids are a little bit older, okay, let's say they're high school, you know, you could get into doing some um, volume calculations. Um, like I said, let's say you want to put, you know, a quarter inch, uh, an eighth inch top dressing on 120,000 square foot of greens. You know, as long as you give them a couple numbers and kind of start walking them through it, yeah. they can do it. Okay. And being able to apply what they're learning is the key to this whole thing. Yeah, it is. And to get them introduced to the environment. Right. Yeah, exactly. But, um, you know, you can look at, uh, you know, if you have an overhead photo, uh, aerial photo of the golf course, you can look at cart pass on the front nine, cart pass on the back nine. Um, they can go on Google Earth and. Exactly. Well, let's say that. Uh, so, well, you tell them, just tell them that you've got, uh, you know, uh, asphalt, a uh, two-inch overlay on the asphalt costs a buck fifty square yeah. foot, and you've got twenty-nine thousand dollars in your asphalt budget this year. Um, you know, how much can I do? Um, just simple stuff like that. But like I said, they can go on Google Earth. They kind of like that. You know, the older kids and and you know highlight areas of greens and then do this procedure right here compared to their you know dropping the points on Google Earth around it and then using the the uh, the calculator tools on Google Earth to you know tell you exactly what it is see how close they're coming um, just lots of neat stuff with a high school student when they're doing the putting contest you could probably apply some principles of physics that would be interesting too. yeah mm -hmm. yeah I agree launch monitors ball speed, launch angle, all kinds of stuff, yeah. All right, wow. questions, anything?